Another hot, sticky night for baseball at Turner Field in Atlanta, but another big crowd gathering for game two of our series with the Baltimore Orioles. All season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the right stuff and the low price. Hi again, friends. Joe and Chip back at the ballpark. Boy, what a way to start this series last night. Jair Jurgens, a complete game one hitter. Braves won the ball game by a final score of 4 nothing, and that's something you know tonight's starter, Tim Hudson, would like to duplicate. You know, it's something he already knows a little something about. He's already fired a one hitter once this year, so he has been there and done that. However, in interleague play, not so much. 3 and 14. Can you believe that for Tim Hudson in interleague play and 19 starts? That's not so good. He'll try to improve on that. But you know what? Lately, he's been pitching great baseball, and hopefully that'll continue tonight. Yeah, last time out against San Diego, Tim Hudson was awfully, awfully good. Hopefully he can get it going tonight against the Orioles. Well, his work against San Diego, he had the two-seamer working as good as he has all year long. You're seeing some good backup pitches there on the two-seamer that had the left-handed bats really stymied. A good line, excellent work. He's got 14 straight shutout innings work working right now into this game. Hopefully that'll continue tonight, too. Something else we saw from the Braves, a little long ball action. Jason Hayward hit a home run, his first in quite some time. And how about Chipper Jones? Chipper Jones with a clutch RBI hit late in the ball game helped the Braves, too. That 4 nothing final score. We'll take a break, come back, and talk a little more about Chipper's night as we get you set for the Bravos and the O's. Game 2 coming right up. In part by Academy Sports and Outdoors, by AT&T Ubers, by Delta Airlines, by Checkers, and by Ford. 
Minutes away from first pitch here at Turner Field, getting you set for the Braves and Orioles game two of our final interleague series of this 2011 season. Joe, last night, Jason Hayward got all the highlights with that long two-run homer, but Chipper Jones also added a key RBI, and we've noticed over the last couple of weeks that with men on base, Chipper Jones has been licking his chops and cleaning up at the plate. I'm up there right now trying to... Um, you know, ignite things. And, and when I get opportunities to uh, drive in runs, it seems like for some reason my my level of of focus goes up. You know, and, and I seem to find a hole one way or the other. Pretty remarkable, Joe, what he's been able to do because basically right now Chipper Jones is playing on one leg. His uh, knee is bothering him, but he came up big last night. Good numbers when you got guys on base for Chipper. If you just get on base, he'll get you in one way or in another. And he's talking about his level of concentration. Look at these numbers with runners on base, over 400 with runners in scoring position, and 381 with two out runners in scoring position. That is tremendously clutch. And at age 39, he's still getting it done in that regard. The one thing that he needs to work on, he's hitting a buck 93 with nobody on base. His average will go up. He'll get a few hits in those situations. How concerned are you with the knee? I did talk to Chipper before the game. He said he may have to have another shot. Well, that would be two or three days on the bench, and we'll have, have to keep an eye on that. Hopefully, uh, Chipper will be able to give it all he's got tonight and help the Braves beat Baltimore for the second straight game. Braves have an eight-game win streak against the American League working. Let's see if Tim Hudson can keep that alive here at Turner Field. First pitch, tiny lineups coming right up. Academy Sports and Outdoors by AT&T and by Chase. A hot, beautiful night for baseball here in Atlanta. The Braves had a big crowd here last night of over 33,000 for fireworks on Friday. More fireworks scheduled after the game tonight as it's gone with the wind night. At Turner Field. Miss Scarlet and Red about to tell everybody it's time to play ball. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. Great way to start the series last night. Baltimore held to only one hit. As Adam Jones, the very talented young center fielder, the only man to hit safely against starter and winner Jair Jurgens last night. Jake Arietta, the young right hander, of course, will pitch in bat ninth under National League rules. 
Tim Hudson on the mound for his 17th start. He's six and six, a 3.51 ERA. Didn't get. He got off to a good start, and then these five starts in the middle there, not so good. But he's back on track. 14 straight shutout innings of work against Toronto and San Diego. And tonight he'll try to keep that going against the Baltimore Orioles, a team he is nine and two against in his career with a 2.53 ERA. His four keys to pitching success: that two-seamer that was so effective in San Diego. And turn day into night. His day ERA 156. His night ERA three runs higher. Hard to figure on that one. And good start. Tim McClellan with the ball and strike calls. Raises the right hand as J.J. Hardy leads things off for Baltimore. Hardy a point shy of a 300 batting average. Wow. Tim all right. David Ross is going to check on that. Freddy Gonzalez to the top step along with Jim Lovell. <laughs> Look at Chipper. Chipper's doubled over. <laughs> It was scary for a moment. But he Jojo Reyes. The boy sprang up quickly. Thankfully nobody on base. <laughs> and he's absolutely the guy for that to happen to. Yes. Because he'll laugh about that the rest oh. of the year. And he wants to know what's the count. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. That's how you answer. Yeah. Imagine we'll be seeing that on Sports Center tonight, a time or two. Doesn't matter. I saw it live. It's way better live. Hardy retired on strikes. Here's Nick Marcakis. This guy was hotter than the weather entering the series last night. Had a 19 game hitting streak. But uh, JJ shut him down with an 0 for 4 night. Baltimore did that a lot last night. You know why? It's the old Baltimore chop. Well, wow, they're breaking that out of their offensive playbook awfully early <laughs> for game two. <laughs> Tim's just trying to avoid that. That hole he fell into. <laughs> I thought for a minute a gopher popped up yeah. and tripped him. But what a great reaction, a tip of the cap. Yeah. Perfectly. There's, there's skid marks all over the front slope of the mound. Here's Jones. Uh, all one. I don't know where Kim Hudson is, but I'll bet she's in tears laughing right now. <laughs> One ball, one strike. You know, the sure sign of a player being a very talented one at the major league level is when fans or broadcasters or writers start asking the question, how would player A, B, or C look in our lineup? How about this guy for Baltimore? He'd look good in anybody's starting eight. Mm -hmm. He can do a lot of things. He's got power, he's got speed, he's a gold glover. And he stays alive. One ball, two strikes. 
There's your outfield alignment. Nate McLeod made a great catch last night. Chipper Alex, Ugla, and Freeman around the horn. David Ross, the Auburn connection, working as the Braves' battery for game two. Slow roller. Chipper's got to hurry, and he'll put that in his pocket. You brought it up, I didn't. That Baltimore chop breaks up the no-hit bid. This is one of those games where you really, really, really wish Tim Hudson was miked. Wish he was what? Miked up, yeah. So he'll go to the stretch with Matt Wieters, the Orioles catcher. Strike one. Wieters was 0 for 3 in the series opener last night. And has a big hole on the right side to play with, with two outs. But he hits it right to Alex Gonzalez, and that retires the side. That'll be a fight in Kangaroo Court, folks. No harm, no f For Atlanta tonight. Jason Hayward drops to third, Chipper fourth. And with Brian McCann getting the night off, David Ross will catch and hit eighth ahead of Tim Hudson. And a guy the Braves have never seen before, Jake Arietta, who's having a real good year at nine and four, largely because he's getting almost seven runs a game. Are you kidding me? He has been skipped to start here recently because of some elbow problems. His last start in Pittsburgh, he got five runs to work with before he ever took the mound. He is 25 years old, 6'4", 225 out of Plano, Texas. Four keys to success tonight, a 1,000 pitch count. That's because this guy throws a ton of pitches, walks a lot of people. Hopefully Tim McClellan will cut him some slack tonight. He will pitch inside. He's very aggressive, and he likes the baseball. They're just hoping he can stay healthy. 
Buck Showalter said in the Baltimore papers today, no pitch count, no limitations for Arietta today. But he does have some bone chips and inflammation in the elbow. Line drive ripped into the seats foul by Jordan Schaefer. It's 0 and 2. That start against Pittsburgh, he threw 87 pitches in five innings. 102 in six innings, the start before that. Plano, Texas is a suburb of Dallas. He went to TCU in Fort Worth and was a fifth round pick in 07 by Baltimore. That ball had some nasty sinking action to it. And Jordan Schaefer is down swinging for the first out. His fastball is low to mid 90s at times. That's a good breaking ball there. Took a little off. He's got a slow curve. That's what that looked like. He's also got a slider and a change up that he'll use to left handers on occasion. He's also given up 12 homers. Alex Gonzalez had a two hit night. And he swings at the first pitch. Luke Scott is under that. And quickly there are two outs. Two outs on five pitches which works against the game plan you were talking about regarding Arietta. Make him work. Make him work. Yeah, if you're overly aggressive, you're playing right into this guy's hand, hands. If you make him throw a few pitches, you're going to get into a good hitter's count more than likely because of the deep pitch counts he's typically in. Another thing is, you've never seen him pitch before. Two pitches will take care of Jason Hayward and seven takes care of the Atlanta team in the bottom of a scoreless first inning. Own fan club here at Turner Field tonight. All season long, Braves baseball on Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price. I didn't know the Flintstones were in Gone with the Wind. Good combo tonight. Derek Lee starts off the Orioles second. Which Freddie did they come dressed for? That guy or the guy in the dugout? Either that or they're big fans of Fred Stone and the Braves 
See? Visitors Clubhouse. There you go. I mean, how could you not be? Well, but Fred Flintstone, Fred Stone, come on. I think you're all over it. You know, you've never seen Fred Flintstone or Fred Stone in the same place. Outside to Derek Lee, 241 his average, six home runs. Derek has missed a couple of weeks with an oblique problem for the Orioles. And Tim issues a leadoff walk. Not a lot of difference between lefties and righties against Hudson for the year. Batting average wise, right handers hitting 226, left handers 236. Three homers allowed to each side. Has weapons to operate against lefties or righties. Strike one, two. The Orioles left fielder Luke Scott has faced Hudson three times. He's 0 for 3 lifetime. You go through their lineup tonight, and you talk about last night, everybody took an over except one guy. Doesn't happen too often. Well, you mentioned uh, Jurgens with a one hitter, Tim Hudson with a one hitter. It's been a long time since the Braves have had two of those in one season. It's a neat note from the Braves' press clippings today. Last time the Braves had two one hitters in a season was all the way back in 1976. Hmm. And that trick was turned in by Phil Necro and Andy Messersmith. And a late call takes care of Luke Scott, who grumbles about that. Hudson strikes him out for out number one. Is that two seamer? There were guys in San Diego complaining too, but the ball backs up. And if you give up on it, like they used to do all the time with Greg Maddox, he's going to eat you up with it if you're a left handed hitter. And he just did that to Scott. Looked like a good call. What is that like as a hitter when that pitch is coming to you? What, what do you see? It immediately reads ball. It immediately reads a pitch that's going to stay inside and, if anything, move more inside than where it comes out of his hand. And then all of a sudden with that two seam grip you can kind of make it almost like a screwball spin the way you, with the finger pressure and it comes back. Just one of those freaks of nature things. Here's Reynolds. Baltimore got this guy to take some offensive pressure off the Marcakis's and Adam Jones is of the world and certainly Reynolds a powerful hitter. 15 home runs. But a 224 average he will strike out. As you mentioned he's had real trouble defensively at third base. Yeah way too many errors for him 18. Most of any player in baseball. At any position but. You know what I mean he's fourth in the American League in strikeouts. With 81. But he's also got an on base percentage of 352 because he's in the top 10 in walks. Well, in this day and age in the game, 30 home runs has tremendous value. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's face it, we're not going to see that many in baseball hitting 30, 40, or 50 anymore. Yeah, he'll, he should fly by 30 in that ballpark. And he smokes that ball towards center. Schaefer on the run at the wall. Makes the catch. 
And his throw comes back toward first, and Derek Lee back safely. Jim Palmer does the TV work for the Baltimore Orioles. He was in the park last night. He's here tonight. He said they counted at least six balls last night that would have been a home run that would have been home runs at Camden Yards. We'll add another one to it. Nice play by Jordan Schaefer. So Reynolds retired two outs. We get our first look at Blake Davis, who's in at second base for the Orioles. Last night, Robert Andino started for them. Tonight, it's Davis's turn. We have not seen Brian Roberts in this series. Strike. He's still on the DL. Brian's still battling a, an assortment of injuries, but still having problems after a concussion last year that started when he hit himself in the head with his bat because he was angry. I've seen guys, you know, crack themselves like on the front of their helmet. He did it so hard he gave himself a concussion and was on the DL. If I ever do anything like that, just hit me in the head with a bat, okay? Oh, I wait. Yeah, that's <laughs> that would happen. That's like a pitcher punching the wall with his pitching hand, yeah, right? Exactly. I mean, and he's such an important part of their team, and, I, and I'm really sorry for them that he's had so many injuries that have knocked him out of the lineup over the last couple of years. But there you go. That this is a team that hadn't had a winning season in 13 years. But when he's in the lineup, they got a 500 record over the last two years. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, they could certainly use some stability. Baltimore they hit with the players on the field and the man in the manager's chair Buck Showalter now as you know leading the Orioles took over late last season did a terrific job with this Orioles club made them relevant for the final 75 80 games 35 wins this season didn't get their 36th last year until August so Hudson hopes they have to wait at least another day to earn that in tonight's game two great catch by Jordan Schaefer took away a hit from Reynolds and we still have no score.
Paul Briquet, Fab Chorana, 101st Airborne Hua. Uh, go Braves! Hua. I love it. And join us tomorrow for a very special Sunday Braves broadcast as we honor the men and women who serve our country. It's Fox Sports South's tribute to the troops. Coverage starts tomorrow at 1 Eastern with Braves Live, followed by the series wrap-up between the Braves and the Baltimore Orioles. It'll be a great day. Come in camo. Everybody just come in camo. Our camera operators are going to be in camo tomorrow. Won't even be able to see Tex Fay, but he'll be working. Here's Chipper Jones to start the second for the Braves. 44 RBIs for the Braves third baseman, including one last night. Yeah, out a way to cut it loose. That ball smacked under the glove of Blake Davis. An aggressive swing got him loose and then fastball down the middle. Right up the middle. And again, if you weren't with us in our opening comments, he's hitting coming into the game 193 with no one on base and hitting over 300 with runners on and over 400 in some RB in some run runners in scoring position situations. And doing it as we said too, basically on one leg. Mm -hmm. Foul ball off the bat of Freddie Freeman. He was 0 for 3 last night. But if Chipper does have to have a shot that typically knocks you out for a couple of three days. I think we just had our question answered. Oh, and two. Tim McClellan's a good umpire, but it's like he umpires in about eight feet of water. Yeah, it's sometimes a secret for us upstairs to know what the call is. And Freddie down on three pitches for the second strikeout for Arietta. Their starters lately have not been very good. Their last 17 games for their starting rotation, they have an ERA of six and a half. And their last seven games, it's over eight. So when he's getting right at seven runs of run support, that may not be enough. And Baltimore, at the start of this month of July, is about to go into a really nasty part of their schedule. After the game tomorrow, they head to Texas for three and wrap up the first half of the season with a four game trip to Fenway Park and the Red Sox. It was Jeremy Guthrie in your picture there that pitched last night, and you know, he pitched a really good ball game for seven innings. He had only given up two runs, and that was on the home run to Hayward. And then the first two guys got on in the eighth, and they eventually scored off the bullpen. He's pitched in tough luck all year. What was the number you had last night for Guthrie? Six of 16, six of 17? Yeah, I think it's actually might be seven now. Seven games where his team had not scored a run for him while he was in the game out of his 17 starts. That's a sure way to go three and ten. Yeah. And he's, at least for me, a better pitcher than that. Was last night for sure.
94 mile an hour fastball strikes out Ugla, who's 0 for 5 in the series, all with strikeouts. This has got to be encouraging for Buck Showalter because, again, they skipped this guy a start with some inflammation in his elbow, and it's something that he battled last year. And he's got some spurs in his elbow. It's one of those things where they just keep a close eye on him and hope that uh, doesn't do any damage in there, that they're in a place, those spurs, where he's not going to tear anything up. And John Smoltz pitched his virtually his whole career with bone spurs somewhere. Ground ball towards second. And that'll retire the side for the Braves. Chipper Jones let off the frame with a base hit. And that's all for Atlanta as we go to the third inning. For our AT&T Uverse trivia question, who's the only active player with a higher career average than Vladimir Guerrero's 318 lifetime mark? Minimum of 2,000 major league games. Well, if you could give me the list of the players who have played at least 2,000 games, that would help. I think I got this. I would, one. I would say to our questionnaire. Questionnaire. Maybe I'll answer the question with a question to try okay. to get some hints. Arietta pops it up. The Orioles pitchers have done a good job of hitting the baseball in interleague play, but not this time. He's the first out. My question would be Is the answer to the trivia question someone we will see on this homestand? You're probably not going to get an answer. Good point. Answer that I was given was there's no helping. A lot like no crying. Yes. JJ Hardy takes a strike. I think a safe answer would be the brisket sandwich. Why? Sure use one of those tonight given what well never mind. You by the way were a Twitter sensation. Oh yeah? Oh people went crazy. Huh. Well it was really good folks. If that's the one that they keep. Wow, J.J. Hardy not making much contact in this series. He's now struck out four times in six at bats. Slider. That's the strikeout pitch to the right handers. He can use the change up on the lefties or he can go to that two seamer on the lefties. Like I said, he's got weapons to both sides. Ball by Marcakis finds a hole. And 
and Marquecas has the second Baltimore hit. He likes to swing at the first pitch. Got to keep an eye on him for the rest of the series on that first pitch, especially in if any RBI situations present themselves. But he also got that one put on a tee for him. Of all the amazing numbers that there are for Tim Hudson in his career, we know what his record is when he gets four runs or when he has a two run lead. The one that just boggles my mind is his struggles against the American leagues. It's putting on a Braves uniform. I, it defies explanation, doesn't it? It does because he was so successful against the American League before he came to Atlanta. It just how do you how do you figure that? And high walk totals. That's just not him averaging five per nine. But clicking along tonight with four strikeouts. And now it gives up a ground ball that Alex Smothers backhand flip. And a little late. All hands are safe. It's an infield hit for Jones. That yeah, was almost a spectacular play. Alex was sprawled out so far with his arms out in front of him. He had a hard time getting anything on this toss. Oh, he did it with a glove, didn't he? He flipped it with a glove, that's why. And then it got hung up in the fingers of the glove, and that's what pulled it away from Dan. That's too bad. That was. A beauty in the making. Now be careful with waiters. When you talk about a cleanup hitter cleaning up with runners at second base or third base. This guy has done a lot of damage. Yeah, the number one average in the American League with runners in scoring position. 434. Off the chest of Freeman, and he'll take it to the bag himself. That is going to leave a mark. But Hudson pitches out of third inning trouble and keeps the game scoreless. Right. Have, it already had the mayonnaise and the coleslaw on the sandwich. David Ross starts off the Braves third. Ross, hot hitting Tim Hudson and.
Jordan Schaefer. 18 pitches for Arietta in two innings of work. And Ross up on toward Reynolds. And the ball gets away from Derek Lee. Ross on his way to second. Hit and an error, and that's the man you want to hit it to. Reynolds, as we told you, has had big time defensive issues. I thought he was about to make a spectacular play because this was bunted hard, and that's a hard one to catch and hang on to. But David Ross, who tried to put one down in Seattle and drive in a run and bunted it a little too close to the mound, put that one in a perfect spot. Now let's see if the hot hitting Hudson can move him over to third. Tim has two hits this year. And three sacrifices, but one of those two hits was a game winner. Pitchers were out early working on their bunting today, too. The coaches had the pitching mach machine set up, so it was not just lobbing them in there. It was throwing the ball hard and making them really concentrate on trying to get the ball down against a hard pitch. Remember, Hudson and Jurgens each have one hitters. And that's the subject of our quote of the day from Geico. Now Tim said it wouldn't have been a, it would have been a lot better if he had hit a two run homer to win it though. I've heard of that kind of thing happening. <laughs> Great line. Tim got it down. Only one play Ross to third with one out. He's probably going to go back to the dugout and ask Freddie, how can you take the bat out of my hands? Very simple because you can bunt. Stayed on top of that high fastball and sets Jordan Schaefer up in good shape here to try to drive in the first run of the game. Baltimore has not led in their last 39 innings. Braves try to put him behind with one out in the home half of the third tonight. Not a bad idea. One of the things though when you do that is you got to consider who the runner is. And with all due respect to David Ross who just put down a great bunt himself. He does have catcher speed and. If it's not a good bunt they might still have a chance to get him at the plate. Squeeze was on. And David Ross is tagged out by the pitcher, Arietta, who's standing at home plate. Two, five, one. A whiff on the bunt. And then dead man walking down the third baseline. And two outs. Three balls and a strike. So for the moment, Reynolds off the hook. And a shallow fly ball to center. And Jones makes the play to retire the side. Braves try to squeeze. Schaefer whiffed on the butt, and the Braves out of luck as we head to the fourth inning.
field tonight and the 4th of July festivities have begun fireworks last night fireworks tonight and of course Monday when Colorado is here the number one fireworks show in Atlanta is presented by Publix and Captain America the first Avenger for tickets visit braves.com or dial 800-745-3000 Hanson, Lowe, Jurgens, and Hudson, the starters scheduled for the Braves against Colorado. And I think it's supposed to be Ubaldo Jimenez Monday night against Hanson. We don't know. They're giving us an undetermined on uh, Colorado's rotation, but everything that I had looked back on in terms of when their next turn might come up pointed to Jimenez pitching here Monday. And how about that matchup? Tommy Hanson and Ubaldo Jimenez and fireworks on the fourth. Menace first start back here since his no hitter last year. Derek Lee walked his first time. He starts the Baltimore fourth. Eric played a big part for the Braves down the stretch last year. Remember, Troy Gloss was hurting. Braves got him from the Cubs in mid August. Eric hit three homers, knocked in 24 men down the stretch for Atlanta. He's had a, a terrific career and knew that with Freddie Freeman waiting in the wings, his future wasn't going to be with the Braves, but. Talking with him before the game, he loved every minute of his Braves experience. Class act, too, all the way around. Roller hit towards short. Bare hand Alex and a wide throw will skip off the facing of the Braves dugout. Derek Lee did not turn towards second, so he's safe and he'll reach on another infield hit. When you grab the ball barehanded, you're at the mercy of whatever grip you get. And sometimes, especially when you're having to hurry like that, you may throw the ball with all four fingers and thumb wrapped around the baseball. Which is what it looked like there with Alex. And he kind of came out of his hand late. See if we can tell. So he's got his whole hand wrapped around there. But looked like he made, was able to make a little bit of a shift with his ring finger to get it off to the side. Good try. Just a wide throw. Boy, these guys are swinging a lot of first pitches. Well, the way Tim Stuff moves, you can understand not wanting to get to two strikes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, get him early in the count if he gets something good to hit. I'm not sure that some of these pitches have been good to hit as much as them, the Orioles hitters just trying to be aggressive on that first one. Three of their four hits are those Baltimore chops you talked about. And right now they are beating up the top of the baseball. Mm -hmm. Oh and two. Well that's what we saw coming back to Tim. In that start against Toronto. Was he was getting his sinker back. And then he got the two seamer back in San Diego. And that's why he's got this run of shutout innings working. His split finger pitch acts like his changeup. Acts as his changeup.
slow roller hit toward Ugla. He'll apply the tag. Backhand flip too high. And pulled Freeman off the bag. Well, the Braves have had some real close, just, just off the mark a little bit plays so far. The diving stop by Alex up the middle and with the flip that Dan that pulled him off the bag and then the errant throw by Alex. So Scott trades places with Derek Lee. He's at first with one out. Here's Reynolds who drove Jordan Schaefer to the wall in center. Drives this one to straightaway center. Jordan going back as far as he can go, and Mark Reynolds gives Baltimore its first lead in nearly 40 innings. A two run home run. When Jordan Schaefer caught the ball his first time up, he wasn't even to first base because he thought he hit it out, and he was he stood there a little amazed. I don't think he had any, had any doubts about this one. And again, first pitch. Great extension. And it landed up there on that camera position. 16 home runs for Reynolds, and Baltimore leads 2 0. Here's Blake Davis. And you go back to. The fact that that little toss, that backhanded toss from Ugla was just too high for Freddie to keep his foot on the bag, so it cost the Braves a run. Otherwise, they'd have had a double play. Wants a new baseball, gets it now with a 3 0 count. And now walks on four pitches. Tim's second walk, now the Orioles pitcher will try to help himself with a bunt. At least we think he will. Baltimore came into this series 7 out of 15 with their pitching staff at the plate in interleague play. Yeah, that's why the walk is frustrating to the eighth hitter. So you can get out, get out of the inning pretty fast if you can retire him and then get the pitcher. David Ross came out of the crouch ready to fire to first. Tough to do something like this when you're never asked to do it in the American League. Chances are real good he wasn't even asked to do that in college at TCU's where they use the DH2. But it makes it doubly hard when you don't square around, when you just keep your same batting stance and then just kind of twist your upper body. Doesn't put you in a good position. He's down on strikes. Hudson's fifth. And J.J. Hardy in the top of the order coming up now. 2 nothing Baltimore. Mark Reynolds on the first pitch he saw in this inning. Line one just to the left of straightaway center field. Ball really jumps off his bat. I know that he strikes out a lot, so it doesn't make enough contact. But when, when he's on, it really jumps. Runner at first goes. The pitch is high. The throw to second is on the money. 
Davis thrown out trying to steal for the first time. David Ross guns him down. And as we head to the middle of the fourth inning, Baltimore has grabbed its first lead. little confusion over who was batting where earlier tonight. Yeah, Alex is batting second. He's coming out of the dugout, but look who's already in the on deck circle. Alex has got his head down, kind of laughing. But Jason was already out there. He forgot that he was hitting third tonight. That was last time around. So Arietta now. Pitching very aggressively and frankly very successfully has a two run lead now. Interesting note on him in the Baltimore media guide. He debuted in the big leagues last year and beat the Yankees. Shot toward Reynolds, deflects it to himself, and takes care of Gonzalez for out number one. Arietta the first, as you look at the replay. Arietta the first to debut and beat the defending world champions in the big leagues since Kyle Davies did it for the Braves. On a really cold, rainy night in Boston. One time through, what do you think of the Orioles starter? Well, he's doing something tonight he hasn't done all year, and that's limit his pitches. He's getting early outs. He's throwing strikes. He's not going to deep counts. He's only thrown 32 pitches and only nine out of the strike zone. He hasn't done anything approaching this all year long. Pop fly over toward the Baltimore dugout foul. Well, that was one of your Ford keys. A thousand pitches. Right now he's 9,967 shy of that. Yeah, I don't think he's going to come close to it tonight. Rick Adair is his pitching coach, chatting there with a the manager. And Hayward's down on strikes. Again, everybody just goes in slow motion, eight feet of water. Nobody's, everybody's wondering, well, what happened? Is it, what is it? Oh, strike three. Thanks, Tim, for letting us know. And I'm guessing, guessing Tim's saying strike. 
Obviously we can't hear that. If he was and Jason would have been turning around a lot sooner to head back to the dugout. Weeders would have thrown it to third base a lot sooner than he did. Chipper has one of the Braves two hits. That was a second inning single. And now he strokes one to left center field. Jones on the run. He won't get there. That'll short hop the fence. Chipper's two for two. Put a good swing on this one. Fastball that had a lot of the plate. Weeders looked down like he thought, uh oh, that's going out of here. And it almost did. Short hopped the wall. Be nice to pick up a two out run here. 514 doubles now for Chipper Jones. 46 away from tying former Oriole Eddie Murray for second on that all time switch hitter doubles list. Back to back, he threw the slider in there, that slow curve in there for a strike that he took, and then he backs it up with one that's a little bit harder down to his back foot. So it was the same pitch, virtually the same pitch on the same eye level, but not a strike. Was Freeman hit by that pitch? Yes, he was. Thanks, Tim. First and second, two outs. Like I said, Tim's a good umpire. It's just his pace. That's just the way he works. You got Freddie right on the toe. Chance for Dan Ugler to turn the game around with one swing. To left. Ball dropped. Chipper around third is going to score. It's two to one. This ball was hit like a rocket. And Scott came in hard. Looked like he had to play, but once he went to the turf, Right off the heel of the glove and then off his belt. Two hands might have helped. But who would do that these days? They score that a base hit? They did. Okay. Christmas comes early perhaps, but the Braves will take it. Here's Nate McClough. All this trouble with two outs, a double, a hit by pitch, and an ugly single to left. He's been having some good at bats, too. He's been hitting the ball sharply. Not always getting a lot to show for it. In fact, he's 0 for his last 11, but he's putting good swings on the ball. And he's ahead, two balls, no strikes. Braves will have a decision to make with their roster in the days ahead. Martin Prado's taking batting practice, started yesterday, took more BP today. The Braves hopeful of getting him back perhaps sometime on this homestand. They'd love to have him back and ready to go when we head to Philadelphia before the break. That's pretty ambitious, but judging by the smile on Martin's face today, that might happen. He's thrilled to be on the field.
One of the more patient at bats by the Braves tonight. And you go uh, get a three and one count from Arietta when he's in trouble. Laying off that breaking ball. Bases are loaded now. First walk, first visit from the Baltimore pitching coach. And like you said, all with two outs. There's been the big league pitching coach for the Indians, the Detroit Tigers, and the Seattle Mariners. Place to put David Ross. Tying run 90 feet away. After breezing through the first three and two thirds, he's now up to his 20th pitch of the inning. in Major League Baseball. This is a no doubter. And there's not a hole you can dig deep enough if you're Luke Scott trying to hide after missing that ball that Ugla hit. So five runs across for the Braves all with two outs. The crowning blow David Ross. His second career grand slam. Not bad for a guy whose first big league home run came against a first baseman. Yeah, Mark Grace. Well, there's that five run mark that's so big for Atlanta this year, too. Off the thumbs of Tim Hudson. And that will retire the side. Arietta with a long look out toward Luke Scott in left. Chipper started it with a double. Ross ended it with a grand slam. And the Braves have turned this game around in the bottom of the fourth.
you in part by Sonic, by Toyota, and by Georgia Power. Wow, what an inning here at Turner Field. If Luke Scott makes a tumbling catch in the outfield, David Ross never comes up with the bases loaded. But he did. And, and good, he did. And good things happen. So Tim Hudson now a three run lead, and the top of the Orioles order is coming up. J.J. Hardy was in the batter's box when Blake Davis was thrown out trying to steal to end the Orioles' half of the fourth inning. That's a pretty good inning for a catcher, isn't it? Yes, it is. Best backup catcher in baseball. Braves have got a real good run going, too, and they score five or more runs. This is at Turner Field over the last two seasons. They're 44 and 3. They've also, this year, overall, they've gone 26 and 2, and they've won 12 straight. And 23 of the last 24. Hardy to center. Schaefer may have misjudged it, but he caught it. Oh, what a play by Schaefer over the shoulder. Folks, I can't tell you how hard this is to accomplish when you can't read the ball off the bat or you didn't see it off the bat. Look how long he's frozen here. And then to break back on it, take your eye off the ball, turn your head back to the other shoulder, and still track it. That was an incredible catch. Great play. Because essentially what happens when, when you realize, uh-oh, it's over my head, is then it becomes a foot race for you to get to the point where the ball's going to come down and you try to find that spot. He can go get him out there, can't he? Yes, he can. Two terrific plays tonight. Took one away from Reynolds, takes one away from J.J. Hardy. And now Markakis, the hitter. And now ahead, three balls, no strikes. Nick's a local kid out of Woodstock High School. And now three and two. A single with one out, his second hit of the game. So Adam Jones bats with a man aboard, a 5 2 Braves lead. Here's the ATT Uverse trivia question and answer. Who's the only active player with a higher average than Vladimir Guerrero's 318? I'm going to go with Todd Helton of the Colorado Rockies. I'm with you, winner tie. Way to go, partner. Todd's having a good year, too, by the way, for yeah, Colorado. He's healthy. Hopefully he won't be doing all that good this next week. So we've got a one-game winning streak on the trivia. Back home. But one on the streak. Half. We've got a one-and-a-half. That's right. I forgot last night. That's right. One and a half. That counts as a win, so we're really 2 0. Oh. I haven't seen the, haven't seen the season standings on the correct answer versus the truck yet. That's the only thing.
little calming trip to the mound and maybe trying to get Tim not to be so fine. He's had good stuff tonight. Made a mistake to Reynolds, but other than that, he's pitched good baseball and a lot of ground balls. From one Jones to the other. Two outs. That was AJ to CJ. Waiters hitless in his homecoming. Star at George Tech. Not anymore. Lines out with the left center field. Marcakis around second. Throw back to the second base bag, but he's back and standing safely. Another one that he got up. When Tim is having a little trouble, sometimes he gets under the baseball and starts and pushes it a little bit. The ball comes out of his hand high, so there's not any sink on it, stays on the same plane. He's got to get back up on top, and maybe that's what David Ross was reminding him of. Eric Lee represents the tying run for Baltimore. And a sinking line drive spirited short, and that retires the side. Tim got a big shutdown inning in the fifth and leads game two of this series by a 5 2 count. Thanks to a grand slam from David Ross, but let's take a look at our Toyota plays of the game. Part of the reason the Braves have the lead are some good defensive plays by Jordan Schaefer robbing Mark Reynolds of extra bases and now taking extra bases away from J.J. Hardy here in the top half of the fifth inning. Our Toyota plays of the game from the Braves center fielder. And how many times do you see it? How many? I mean, really? Do we have a graphic for that? I think we start should start keeping track of that. Yep. All right, I Gretchen, really you're on yeah. notice. Yeah. We'll just start here. And then we can have like a mostly a second half. Yes. I have a feeling we're going to have a really hard trivia question tomorrow. No, it should be fair. It's a day game. Hard hit ball to second from Jordan. And there's your first out. We talked yesterday about the importance of this homestand for the Braves. They've had two real good road trips, swept the Seattle Mariners. And while they've played well here at Turner Field, this has not been a dominant home field yet for the Braves in 2011. Yeah, not this year. Not yet, but it's it's growing. 
you lose all those series that they've lost here at home this year before the All Star break. It's hard to to have a winning record yet. They're 23 and 17. Thanks to some sweeps. Last night the Braves scored four. They have five through four innings and a third tonight. And maybe as you see major difference between last year and this year. Let's see if Scott can handle this one. He does for the second out. Another thing about those seven series losses that includes one Turner Field series loss to each of their opponents in the National League East too. All four of the other teams have come in here in one series. So hopefully that'll change right after the break because the Braves will be right back into National League Eastern play with the Nationals a brief three game series. Then we head out of the division until the end of the month. Braves host the Marlins the 29th 30th and 31st of July Boy, those changes just keep coming too out of Washington on their staff Dan Radisson fired as a first base coach. He was a longtime Jim Riggleman aide back in his days with the Cubs. Yeah, Davey Johnson the new manager we will see him right after the break Washington will be the first team in. Fourth inning got out of hand for Jake Arietta. A double to hit Batsman, then a line drive to left that was dropped, then a walk to Nate McLeod. That was the real tough bit of pitching for him. Then the Ross Grand Slam. Hey, I'm all for uh, Dan Ugla getting any hits he can muster. And good for him that it was credited a hit, but if I'm Jake Arietta, I'd be a little upset that all those runs were earned. At least the four on the grand slam. Hayward goes the other way. His third hit of the series. And Jason now with a five game hitting streak. I was really complimenting him today up on his. Home run last night because of the pitch he got on top of. Well, he does it again here. A letter high pitch. They didn't. He didn't go up to. And he said today about the home run. He said, "Yeah, I, I went up to it." And there's another good swing. Remember the Braves four games out of first with Martin Prado hurt, with Jason Hayward having injuries, not getting much production from him. Team starts scoring consistently four runs, five runs a night with pitching staff they can put out on the field. You might see a very, very exciting start to the month of July and a very, very exciting finish to the season. This is another one of those situations we were talking about. Chipper got the rally started last inning with no one on and when he hit the double. We were talking about how he was only hitting a buck 93 with nobody on base but with runners on it's a different story. 328 average. And it even goes up from there if the runners in scoring position. Weeders last night threw out a base stealer. For his 22nd caught stealing. Tough to run on, but might be able to get a good jump off of Arietta, the pitcher. And broke from first and then slammed on the brakes. 
You may have distracted Chipper a little bit too. I'm not sure that Mr. Jones is too happy with that. If you're going to go, go. But out of the corner of your eye as a hitter, if you see that, then you, especially if you're ahead in the count, you're willing to take a pitch. And he might have gotten a good one to hit and laid off instead. Here was Jason breaking. Those are some big lads standing over there at first base together. Yeah, the, unit, the, the field's kind of tilting <laughs> for the Braves dugout, isn't it? Derek's going to play behind him, and I was just going to try to get a message to Terry Pendleton not to go over there and whisper in Jason's ear. <laughs> I don't think he'd like it. No. <laughs> I don't think Terry would be happy with it. He'll be running now with a full count. And more two out trouble for Arietta. The Braves waiting him out now in the fifth inning. Remember, he'd only thrown, what was it, 31 pitches going into the fourth inning, 27 going into the fourth inning. Had to throw 24 last inning. Most of those were after two were out. What a cut. Oh, he stayed back on it, too. Was not fooled on that slow curve. You know, I remember something several years ago. In fact, it was 2008, Chip, when your brother Josh was doing the games for Rome. And I was asking him, you know, we were always hearing about Jason Hayward, and I was asking how Jason was doing. He was telling me he's doing great. And he said, but he said, keep your eye on this guy, Freddie Freeman. He said, he's really having a big year, too. And he did that year at Rome at 316 with 18 homers and 95 RBIs in 130 games. I'll never forget Josh and that. That thought he put in my head. Arietta, though, strikes him out to end the Braves' fifth. And as we go to the sixth inning, Braves lead game two.
by the Georgia Lottery, by the Home Depot, by Honda, and by McDonald's. Joe and Chip back with you at Turner Field. A beautiful night for baseball. Even more so as the Braves have come back from a 2-0 deficit to lead it 5-2. Got a look at part of the crowd here. Great atmosphere this whole weekend. Well, anytime during the summertime, you can come with your families to the ballpark. You have a great time at Turner Field. Especially with the team's playing right now. Fun to watch. Braves try to keep pace with the Phillies. They won in Toronto again today. Roy Halladay pitched for the Phillies. And Luke Scott robbed it first. Braves are playing some defense tonight. Yeah, it's kind of it's not Luke Scott's night. Made the Fielding blunder in left field and now gets robbed of an extra base hit by Freddie. Here's Reynolds. Tim might want to try a different pattern because this guy's hit the ball about nine miles twice. Yeah, and don't don't throw him anything close to the plate on the first pitch. He did. And Reynolds tomahawked that a mile. A two homer night for Mark Reynolds. And the man from Virginia takes a Cavalier stroll around the bases to make it a 5 3 game. There's that same pitch, though, that, that push. When the elbow drops and his hand gets under the baseball, Tim just, it, it, it's just like pushing it through the strike zone and it stays on the same plane again about belt high. Doesn't sink, doesn't run. That ball was that was a liner. That one might have gone to the promo seltzer building at the whole time. Oh, most definitely. So the Orioles creep a little closer. Now a five to three game. Blake Davis is the batter. He has struck out and he has walked. Davis was a fourth round pick back in 06 by the Birds out of Cal State Fullerton. The last three outs recorded by Atlanta. Was a rocket line shot by Adam Jones at Chipper. Derek Lee lined one not quite as hard at Alex Gonzalez. And then the line shot by Scott right at Freddie Freeman. Home run in between all that. Tim just over 80 pitches, but it's a very hot night. Tim, very strong and wiry, but slightly built. Bullpen starts to loosen. And speaking of the bullpen, the Braves made a roster move today. Corey Guerin called up. Christian Martinez sent down. And there was an interesting thought process behind that decision for the Braves today. I thought it was a very astute one. Tying run to the plate. Pitcher spot due, and Vladimir Guerrero's coming up. Freddie's reasoning for that was that Christian Martinez was the long guy, but he hadn't pitched in like seven days, and sometimes he goes real long stretches without pitching because you may need him for some long relief effort or extra innings, but because of that, Kind of makes the bullpen a little short handed if you need an extra arm in there to use just on a regular nightly basis. So that's the reason for the move.
Vladimir Guerrero has had himself a great career. He's 36 years old. We showed you a lifetime batting average around 320. Four hundred forty two homers. Around twenty five hundred big league hits. And a fly ball into right center. Schaefer directs traffic. Guerrero flies out for the second. And before his knees got really bad, he was one of the better right fielders in the National League, too. Ask you a question about Vlad after we look at our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot tonight. Pitching, pitching, pitching. A 168 average against him. JJ Hardy hits. He's 0 for 3. Vladimir Guerrero. Even a borderline Hall of Famer, much less a Hall of Famer for you? Yes. He's definitely a borderline. We had 320 in the big leagues over 16 years. That's yeah, amazing. Makes you wonder, though, how much that horrible turf surface in Montreal took out of him career-wise. Funny in life and in baseball how history could repeat itself. Fans of baseball in the 70s and 80s might remember a guy by the name of Andre Dawson. He too played on that turf and he too had horrible knee problems at the end of his career. Vladimir Guerrero might have followed in those footsteps with the Expos. Vlad not able to start in this series with the National League rules in effect. He'll be back in action perhaps tomorrow afternoon, but if not, certainly when they head down to Texas where he played last year as a member of the Rangers. And Hardy's been swinging at the invisible baseball this entire series. Tim Hudson gives up another tape measure homer to Mark Reynolds, but that's all the Orioles get as we head to the middle of the sixth inning. Sixth inning, time for the Coors Light freeze cam. Tim Hudson, first inning. Slippery slope. Doffs his cap to the fans in appreciation. The Italian judge gave him a seven. That's your Coors Light freeze cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. And if you didn't see it, if you weren't with us at the beginning of the ball game, 
He caught his spikes in the down slope of the mound. Check it out. Bounce right up. <laughs> I mean, everybody's heart stopped for a second. <laughs> but what a great reaction. And so far, so good for Tim. As the Braves go to work in the sixth. Brad Burgesson. 25 year old right hander. He lives in Auburn, Alabama in the offseason. Now pitching for the Orioles. Big numbers. But you also, I mean, in the American League, any pitcher, reliever, starter, whatever, you've, all, you've got to temper their ERA a little bit because of the DH. American League's going to score more runs. They got better averages, hit more homers. Popped up right side. Derek Lee's going to have room. And our glove pops out to start the sixth. Get your tickets now to see the world's greatest party band, the B-52s. They'll perform a free post-game concert presented by Coca-Cola and Delta Airlines after the Braves and Nationals play on Saturday, July 16th. Get your tickets in advance at Braves.com slash B-52s. But burgesson has been a lifetime starter for the Orioles. Nine starts for them this year. And one of the big keys for the Orioles in all the preseason publications was their fate was going to be tied to how guys like Arietta and Burgesson and Mattis all perform for them. And as we've said a couple of times in the series, their starting pitching has really had trouble taking the ball deep into games. And well, today, no exception. Burgesson's in the bullpen. Mattis is sent back to AAA. Arietta's won nine games. He's certainly pitched well enough to win nine, even though he gets a ton of runs to work with. But counting tonight, the Orioles starters have gone six innings or more just four times in the last 18 games. Arietta, five runs, six hits, and five innings, including the Ross Grand Slam. Another pop up. Leaders couldn't find it and got no help. Derek Lee was late. Burgesson was late. And a swing on the house for Nate McLeod. Yeah, Matt was the only one that really had a chance at that. Derek Lee had too far to go, and it wasn't hit that high. It was just too shallow. You're right. The guy that had the best shot at it was Burgesson if he had really taken off off the mound right away. But I don't think he wanted to get in that sandwich between Derek Lee and Matt Weaver's. Good call. Wow. High drive to center. Nate McLeod has a hit and is on for the second time in the game. And that brings up the booming bat of David Ross. He had three homers and five at bats earlier this year. And hadn't hit one since, and that's okay because he hit a slam tonight. Last homer was at the end of April and into May 2nd. Rick Adair has been wearing out a path between the Orioles' dugout and the mound. He's out there again now in the sixth. Looks like he's asking him if he's okay. Ferguson was reassuring him he was. So there may be something going on there that we don't know, not privy to. And just making sure he feels all right. That was a concern about Arietta tonight with a yeah. sore elbow. And frankly, he should be leading this game 3 0, but he's not.
Strike one to Ross. <laughs> That's a great catch there. Well done. Now Howard Feinberg caught that for us. That was wonderful. Conrad. We'll see if he's a decoy or not. I would say he's not this time. They rattled some balls pretty hard the last two innings off Tim. And he's up to 90 pitches on a hot, humid night. Thing they gave away fans tonight. I guess in keeping with Gone with the Wind. Yeah, I'm a little surprised more fans didn't wear the hoop skirts to the game tonight. Nobody can fan like a Southerner. Ross is the second out, and Brooks Conrad will indeed be announced. That'll end the night for Tim Hudson. Tim went six strong innings, three runs, including two homers, both to Mark Reynolds. Brooks. He had a good game against Felix Hernandez in Seattle. And that good game brought his average up to 255. And as a pinch hitter, Brooks has eight hits and 29 at bats, including three home runs. Yeah, 276 mark there. But it's so hard to. If your batting average is suffering because all you do is pinch hit or primarily pinch hit, it's hard to build that average up a little bit. And he's climbed back up there over 250. Derek Lee goes the short way to second for the force play. That retires Nate McLeod. And on we go to inning number seven. Entertaining ball game in Atlanta. The ball's flying at Turner Field, and the Braves lead by two.
charcoal gray and dark blue or black shirts. The umpires need some TLC too, and best trainer in baseball, Jeff Porter, helping cool off Tim McClellan on the Braves bench. And you may be saying, well, why is he over in the Braves dugout? But that's protocol. That's the customary thing. Is that if the umpires need some attention of some kind, it goes to uh, the home team trainer to take care of it. So the AT&T call to the bullpen made. Remember moments ago, Tim Hudson was pinch hit for by Braves manager Bobby Cox. Brooks Conrad did those honors. Now Scott Langbrink takes over the seventh with the two, three, and four hitters up for the Orioles. And my first Bobby Cox of the year for Freddie Gonzalez. <laughs> Skip Rose. It's okay. He's at home thinking, yeah, I would yeah. have done the same thing. Yeah, okay, thanks. We should have a, a, a kitty for that. <laughs> thanks for the catch, partner. Freddie Gonzalez made that change for the Braves. Here's Nick Markakis. It was two for three tonight. Well, he started another hit streak. Had his 19 gamer ended last night. Shutout baseball for Scott Linebrink, his last eight straight outings and 10 of his last 11. Hasn't given up any runs since an outing at Houston, June 13th. Nice sunset, but some dark clouds forming too. Center field and deep. Schaefer back. Can't get that one. Nick Markakis hits a solo home run and the Orioles are within a run. Told you a moment ago, the ball is flying, and that one lined over the fence. 5 4 game. This one surprised me. I think because it didn't really crack on contact. I really thought it was going to be a routine out, but it wasn't. His seventh of the year. So the first time in a while, as you mentioned, that Scott's given up a run. Adam Jones the hitter. Two infield hits and a line drive right to Chipper at third. Fourth homer allowed by Scott. I think that one that last pitch took a bite out of David Ross and Tim McClellan offering him a baseball if he needs to squeeze it. Hopefully it didn't get his bare hand too much. That ball's well hit. But Nate McClough to a sliding stop catches that for the first out. That line drive was hooking and sinking, so Nate did a real good job of staying with that. He didn't think he was going to have to go to the turf to, to make this catch, but it was really going down. Had a lot of top spin on it. Right at the point he was about to catch it. Hey, when Nate does that, it's so smooth and easy. Kind of like our Delta Charter. You come in hot. We didn't come in hot this last time, though. How about that landing from Seattle? Our pilot could have landed that plane on eggshells. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't have cracked a one of them.
Baltimore's hit three homers tonight. They picked up their first lead in nearly 40 innings in the fourth inning when Reynolds hit a two run homer off Tim Hudson. That lead lasted for about two minutes. At least it seemed like it. The Braves in their half of the fourth came right back and scored five runs to take a lead that they have not relinquished yet. It's 5 4. Squibber. Catcher running. Chipper on the move. Makes a good play. Two out. Flaherty getting ready for Luke Scott or the eighth inning. Now Freddie Gonzalez really trying to stick to his guns on trying to give Johnny Venters a few days off. Not just one. He, he's actually had two counting the off day, so that's not enough in Freddie's eyes. Johnny will find out tomorrow, as will everybody else in baseball, his fate for the All Star game. We'll leave the selection shows tomorrow afternoon. I figure the Braves again will be very well represented. Certainly a lot of candidates beyond Brian McCann, who Barring something unforeseen is going to be the starter. And Derek Lee takes that ball up the middle. And he's aboard representing the tying run. And now Freddie Gonzalez and maybe Bobby Cox too contemplating a pitching change. Freddie's going to go to the bullpen. Bobby's going to the popcorn. Yes. 5-4 game. Eric O'Flaherty is coming on for the Braves. His assignment, take care of Luke Scott. We'll see how this matchup works itself out when we come right back. Fourth Brigade Combat Team from Pop Sharana. I just want to wish 
Braves, best of luck. Go Braves. And the same to you, Specialist Mock. We appreciate your service and can't wait for you and the rest of our fine service men and women to get home safely. And we will celebrate your sacrifices with a very special Sunday Braves broadcast. We honor the men and women who serve our country on Fox Sports South's Tribute to the Troops. Our coverage begins tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern Time with Braves Live. That's followed by the series wrap-up between the Braves and the Orioles here at Turner Field. Freddie makes the AT&T call to the bullpen here in the seventh inning and is Eric O'Flaherty, but he won't be facing Luke Scott. Eric had some good work on the last road trip, including the last two games that he pitched in Seattle, two innings hitless, scoreless baseball. It's Nolan Reimold, not Luke Scott, in the Orioles' seventh. One in, one on, two outs. This guy's a good player. 280 average, four homers. His pinch hit once. Another thing about the American League, there just aren't that many pinch hitters. No pitcher to pinch hit for. Out of Bowling Green University. Just couldn't get him to go after it. Rivaled at 15 home runs a couple of years ago, slumped to three homers and only 39 games in 2010. And hit just 207. Got under it and skies it to left. He didn't miss by much. Boy, the ball is really carrying, and the wind has shifted. It's picked up and blowing out toward the left field corner. The park big enough to hold it as we stretch. Breeze blowing here at Turner Field. However, there is rain all around Metro Atlanta. We've gone from 16 to the final two greatest moments in MLB All-Star Game history. Go to MLB.com slash moments. Vote now for your favorite midsummer classic moment. Tune in to the 2011 MLB All-Star Game Tuesday, July 12th, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox to find out which classic moment won. Those two moments are Cal Ripken in 2001 and Stan Musial hitting a walk off homer in 1955. Brown ball up the middle by Schaefer. And he's the first out. I 
mispronounce the Orioles relief pitcher's last name. It's Bergeson, not Burgesson, so I apologize for that. And he gets Schaefer for the first out. Here's Alex. He's 0 for 3. Also have Mike Gonzalez, the former Braves closer, in the bullpen loosening up. Ferguson handles that cleanly. Well, they've done a good job at the top two hitters for the Braves tonight. Schaefer and Hayward had big evenings for the Braves yesterday. Jordan and Alex tonight combined 0 for 8. And that'll do it for Bergeson. It will be Mike Gonzalez, we presume, to face Jason Hayward in a one run game in the seventh. Seventh inning, 5 4, Braves lead. Bases clear, two outs. Atlanta will bid the American League adieu tomorrow. Final interleague game coming up at Turner Field, and they've really enjoyed it this year. Only the Yankees have a better record by winning percentage. And that's the Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Be good to see that man back and active in the days ahead for the Braves. Don't know when yet for Martin Prado. As Mike Gonzalez goes to work. Mike signed a two year deal with the Orioles after he left Atlanta as a free agent, but didn't pitch much last year. Only 29 games had some injury problems. Fly ball toward left, but Reimold is under it. He's got it. And that retires the side. Gonzalez throws two pitches, gets the final out of the inning, and sends this game to the eighth with the Braves ahead by one.
fast, and how about a couple of them tonight from Mark Reynolds? First pitch swinging against Tim Hudson, dead center field, no doubter. First pitch swinging, sixth inning off Tim Hudson, no doubter. And remember, there was another deep fly hit to center that Jordan Schaefer caught right up against the padding, too. Yeah, but he's not a very good hitter in the rain. Well, that's good. At least that's the scouting report. Yeah. It has started to rain at the ballpark. Most of the fans in the lower bowl heading up to the concourse. As O'Flaherty goes to work and misses for a 1 1 count. Yeah, those people see it as a nuisance. There's a lot of others still sitting there seeing it as a little relief. Yeah. Earlier in the seventh, Ed Mangan's ground screw came out and took the cover off the tarp. They'll be ready at a moment's notice if needed. But so far, Tim McClellan, no sign of calling the ground screw out. Told you. Ground ball to third. No, it's a foul ball. Foul ball. That was Reynolds another delayed call. Swing again. It's like Rungi, Brian Rungi was looking at Tim McClellan, but that was Rungi's call because it was behind the bag. It did appear to be a foul ball. And it's raining harder. Just missed. Wow, that was a good pitch. Infield looks in good shape. Mound looks in good shape. Eric got him swinging. Good start to the Orioles eighth. Might be tough to have fireworks in weather like this. Nah, just reflects off the water. Makes it illuminate that much better. So and two. Baltimore appears ready to go to its bench again. There's our Delta on deck stat. Amazingly, best in the majors, even with the DH. 0 for two tonight. Look at these wimps next door. Are you kidding me? The writers closing the windows. God. That's just weak. Round ball. Davis guides one through on a one two count. Again, Baltimore has the potential tying runner aboard with the number nine spot coming up. It's Robert Andino, the starter at second base last night. Buck Showalter already used Vladimir Guerrero. Andino was 0 for 3 last night. Strike out a couple of pop ups. It is coming down, folks. 
See how the area around home plate's gotten dark. First concern is the front slope of the mound, though. Make sure it's still grabbing Eric's spikes. Well, if you remember, the night started with that being a problem before a drop of rain fell. That's true. Now the rain lessening just a bit. Tim Hudson made us think it was raining and the slope was slippery. Tim's probably back in the clubhouse in the training room getting iced down just hoping we don't show it again but too bad buddy. <laughs> but look how fast he got up. And then almost went down again. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Best part was. Tim tipped his cap after half the infield. Started crying. They were laughing so hard. Chipper was doubled over. Here's a big pitch. Three balls and a strike. Little flare is going to drop in front of Hayward. Two are on with one out. Eight. Pinch it single. He tried to fake out Davis, but he had none of that. Now Baltimore's got the top of the order up. Scott Proctor loosening up in the Atlanta pen. They had to pull the cover off the pitching mound so he could warm up. Game on the bases for Baltimore. Two on, one out, one run game. And J.J. Hardy, the hitter. Hardy's had an awful time of it in this series. He's 0 for 8 with five strikeouts. Slow roller hit toward Ugla. He'll have only one play. Runners move up and two out. I would guess these guys don't hit into many double plays. I mean, they just beat it into the ground and just chop it, and no chance to have it, an opportunity to turn to. 77 of them in 79 games. Well, that's a lot. And here's Mark Kekas, who got shut out last night, but he's three for four tonight. Lefty to lefty, though. See if that works in O'Flaherty's favor. Two seventy four is Marquez's average against left handed pitching four RBIs. At one hundred six at bats. That pitch. Yeah, but doesn't have to throw him a strike. Got a base open. And again, this guy doesn't strike out much. Seventh hardest to fan in the American League, one every ten and a half at bats. With the base open, you don't have to give in here. High fly ball, left field, playable. And O'Flaherty is out of the eighth. 
5-4 Atlanta in front. Middle of the order coming up for the Braves. It'll start with Chipper Jones looking for a little home insurance. Housekeeping, a little diamond drive for the mound and the batter's boxes. Rain still continues to come down, and those folks came prepared, and that's why they are our McDonald's fans of the game. Gonna have to get them a bigger umbrella, though, for that for that crew, or somebody's gonna get wet. A little drying agent applied at home plate and on the pitcher's mound. Tim McClellan, the home plate umpire, offers a little assistance as well. And while we have a moment, we'll remind you Friday, August 12th, before the Braves and Cubs play, we'll honor longtime skipper and future Hall of Famer and noted Braves telecast watcher Bobby Cox. will retire his number six jersey. Join us here at the ballpark for this historic event. For tickets, visit Braves.com or call 800-745-3000. That will be a great day. It can be a fan, it could be a hat. Or you can bring your cooler and wear it on your head. Whatever. So we head to the home half of the eighth inning with the rain still falling. And the Orioles have a new pitcher, and this guy is a control specialist, Koji Uehara. You can see there, seven walks in 36 innings. He walked a couple of guys back on April 17th, and that snapped his walkless streak at 36 games. That was the third longest streak for a reliever since 1954. Dennis Eckersley and John Smoltz had gone longer. Eckersley 41 games, Smoltz 38. But last year had the second best strikeout for nine innings rate in the American League behind Matt Thornton of the White Sox at 11.25. Oyahara does not have a save this year. He's given way to Kevin Gregg, the former Marlin and former Cub, and former Blue Jay. And he'll try to hold the Braves right here in the eighth inning with Chipper. Freddie Freeman and Dan Ugla coming up in a one run game. Chipper's been on base three times tonight. Singled in the second, doubled and scored in the fourth, walked and was stranded in the fifth.
One thing about it, when a guy doesn't walk many people, you know you're going to get something around the plate to hit. Ohara was a starting pitcher for most of his time in Japan with the Yamayuri Giants. Baltimore brought him across the Pacific in time for the 09 season. And he just struck out Chipper on three pitches. Starter back in 09 for Baltimore, in fact, became the first Japanese born player ever to play for the Orioles franchise. For the night, Orioles lead by one. It's a 5-4 game. He didn't pitch last night, but he did warm up right up to the point that the Braves added their two runs in the eighth inning to give him a 4-0 lead. This guy's ranged his fastball so far from 83 to 90. Right at 90, and Freddie strikes out. Fans sign up today for the 2012 Braves Fantasy Camp. You'll enjoy a week of baseball at Disney's Wide World of Sports. Braves legend Steve Avery, Javi Lopez, Marquise Grissom, Greg Olson, and others will join you. Register today at Braves.com slash fantasy camp or call 404-614-1526. Douglas sprays one back toward us out of play for a strike. Dan's at bat, the biggest one in this game. A sinking line drive in the fourth inning. That had it been caught by Luke Scott, would have ended the fourth inning. Scott dropped it. Chipper Jones scored. Nate McLeod followed with a walk. And then David Ross hit a grand slam. To account for all of Atlanta's scoring tonight. Had a couple of runners on in the fifth with two out, but really beyond that, they really haven't threatened since. Baltimore's out, hit the Braves tonight 12 to 7. And they'll have the heart of their order coming up in the ninth. No play for Weeders. Ugla still alive. Another pop up. Derek Lee at first base dodges the raindrops and sends this game to inning number nine. Craig Kimbrell looks to continue his climb among the rookie save leaders in baseball history before the break. 5 4 Atlanta, your score.
number nine. Those three games in Seattle as good as you ever want to see from a guy coming in to finish games. Seven strikeouts of the nine outs he recorded. He made Ichiro look horrible and blew everybody else away. Had everybody raving about his stuff. He's got three tough customers to get here in the ninth, though, to get the save tonight. So Kimbrell will answer the AT&T call to the bullpen, and if he can nail it down, he will move into a second-place tie with his 24th save. That would tie him with Mike McDougal of the Royals in 2003 with 24 saves before the All-Star break in a rookie season. Jonathan Papelbon has 26. That's most all-time for first-year closers. You're right. Tough trio. Jones, Weeters, and Lee. Rain is all but stopped, but the heat is only beginning. That one at 96. Like that got a piece of everybody off of Ross and then off the mask of Tim McClellan. Two good fastballs. Now let's see if it's the slider. Ninety eight mile an hour gas. One out. David Ross wanted it up. This is considered up to Craig Kimball about belt high. He couldn't catch up. Waiters drives one toward the right center field gap. Jason will play it on a hop. Lost it in the lights. Threw him a first pitch slider. And that sped up his bat a little bit. But Jason had to back off here because he lost it. Outfield should be playing deep to cut off any extra base hit. McLeod backing up now and left. One ball, no strikes to Derek Lee. Not only do you have the lights to contend with, but all these LED message boards that ring the facades of the decks of stadiums now. Eric Lee, the batter, one ball, no strikes. Popped up. Will that stay in play? First base side. Looks like it will. Two out. Jeremy Guthrie is going to pinch run for Matt Weeders. And Baltimore will call on Felix P.A. to come on and pinch hit. Yes, Guthrie is last night's starting pitcher for Baltimore. One out to get. PA can fly. And he's been one of their best pinch hitters. Four for eight. He was a very highly touted prospect with the Cubs.
Mark Reynolds is on deck. I just soon see him hit tomorrow afternoon. That's right there. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, he took a little off. Make sure he got a strike in there. 95. Foot slider that he was trying to get in there on leaders. Ball game. Ross will throw him out, and the Braves win it 5 4. Tim Hudson wins it. Craig Kimbrell saves it. And David Ross with a grand slam. The decisive offensive blow for Atlanta. Braves have won their ninth straight game in interleague play. And they've won the series and look forward to a sweep opportunity here tomorrow afternoon.